Once upon a time, there was a man who hung himself on a piece of land in a Chinese village, and the people in the village considered this land to be cursed. But there was a Christian man in this village who had a dream that one day, foreigners would come to this piece of land and build an orphanage. And that was the piece of land that Robin and Joyce came to 28 years later. The area we went into, the children were two or three in a cot. And they were basically just ready, just waiting for death, really. The director had said, just pick any babies you want. And there were like 50, 60 babies there. But your mother's heart wants to take every single one of them. But I know that I can't, I don't have enough beds. I don't know how to find specialists for a lot of these conditions. So eventually we picked four babies. And I said to them, remember, we have two, two beds. spare beds. <laughs> we came out with four. We came out with four. <laughs> Rob calls me back. He said, Joyce, come back. Come back and look at this one. And I'm saying, Rob, we have four babies for two beds. He said, come back and look at this one. If we don't take a shoe down. She had sores all around her mouth. We called her Claire. And I listened to him and I said, okay, five but you, babies. You looked at her eyes and the little... She'd given up. She'd given up. You know, you could see it in her eyes that she'd just given up. She was just suffering so much. And just... Eventually, she was adopted to Canada, alive wow. and well. So, what can I say? Listen to your husband sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> In the early stages, New Hope took in abandoned infants that were six months or younger with a fixable medical condition. By seeking out the best medical treatment with surgeons and specialists, Robin and Joyce nursed these children until they were healthy enough to be adopted. Today, however, New Hope's special care units also take in children who are not expected to live. Later on, Joyce and Robin expanded the foster home. So along with the facility in Beijing and the four special care units in the Henan province, we presently have about 300 children. When I first started, I had only heard of these orphans with medical issues like bladder atrophy, hydrocephalus, and cleft lip. So when I got here, my heart broke for these children, and I genuinely felt that they needed our love and care. Some of the greatest challenges that we've experienced as a nurse, uh, seeing sick babies who are almost dying and there's nothing much we could do, but, but only to give them comfort and to shower them with love and to keep them comfortable as possible. In order to provide quality care for hundreds of sick children, Robin and Joyce began to employ staff from local Chinese villages to assist in caretaking, facility management, and administrative tasks. In our workplace, most of the nannies come from the local villages here. The role of the nannies is to bathe the children, change diapers, feed the children, and play with them. One of our dreams is that the system in China will have developed to the place where we're not needed. Conditions are getting much better. There's more money being allocated to things. People's hearts are changing towards these children. They're seeing them as valuable. They're not throwaways, you know, and so I th I, it will change. Before I knew Robin and Joyce, I only worked hard with the hopes of getting a higher salary. When I started working at New Hope, I saw Robin and Joyce's unconditional love, a heavenly kind of love for the children. If the kids were sick during the day, there would be drivers to take the babies to the hospital. But if the babies were sick in the middle of the night, then Robin would drive while Joyce carried the baby. They truly put the children first. If you look at Robin and Joyce now, they are in their 60s, and I often feel like they work even harder than I do. 
So now, the satisfaction in my work isn't measured by how much money I make, but rather by how much I can help these kids with everything I have. Our work isn't about money. It's not like you pay me a certain amount and I'll work for you. I'd still work here even if I'm not paid. It's no problem. When I mess up, Robin and Joyce forgive me. They really treat me like a son. It's not easy. Don't bother me. But for me, the only thing that I want to hear in the end of my life is to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all that matters to me. Nothing else matters. The house doesn't matter. Whatever I think I've done, whether I feel that I've been a good doctor, a good mother, a good wife, it, nothing matters. This is the job that God asks us to be part of. And it's not what he does everybody to be part of, it's just this is the bit they asked us to do and we're doing it to the best of our abilities and that's, that's all we can do, you know. I do it to the best of... My your, expectations. Your expectations. <laughs> yeah, he's working for his wife. <laughs>